Hi everyone, welcome back to Kim Help ASAP. Today we're talking about titrations and specifically we're going to be talking about titrating a weak acid with a strong base. Let's get started. Let's see what this titration looks like. We have got a 25 milliliter sample of 0.1 acetic acid and we're going to titrate it with 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. We are given that the Ka of acetic acid is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. Okay, so we're gonna calculate a couple points along this titration. The first thing we wanna know is how many milliliters of sodium hydroxide I'm going to need to reach the equivalence point. Then I wanna know the pH at the start of the titration, the pH five milliliters before the equivalence point, the pH at the equivalence point, and then the pH five milliliters after the equivalence point. Let's start with A. So to know how many milliliters of sodium hydroxide we need to reach the equivalence point, I'm gonna start with my balanced chemical equation. Now again, the great thing about this chemical equation is it is a one-to-one -one ratio. That's gonna make our calculations a lot simpler. So I'm starting with a sample of acetic acid. How many moles of acetic acid do I have? I'm gonna take my concentration, multiply by the volume I have, so my liters cancel, and I have 0 0.0025 moles of acetic acid. And yes, this liters comes from my 25 milliliters I just converted by moving the decimal. Remember again, at your equivalence point, your moles of acid will equal your moles of base. So taking my moles of acid, I'm gonna convert that to moles of base. Again, this is a one-to-one -one ratio, which is why they're equal. Once I know my moles of sodium hydroxide, I can use my concentration to figure out how many liters of solution I'm going to have. And then just converting that liters into milliliters. My equivalence point happens at 25 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. You can see how this one-to-one -one ratio really works out in our favor for some easier calculations. Okay, so that's part A sorted. Let's go ahead and do part B. So we want to know what the pH is at the start of the titration. Again, we do need our Ka of acetic acid. So we're just calculating the pH of a solution for a weak acid. So here is our equation for a weak acid, an aqueous solution. It is in equilibrium because again, it's a weak acid, so I need to set up an ice table. Here is my ice table. Of course, initially, my concentration of acetic acid is 0.1. I don't have any product. My change is gonna be minus X and then X and X. And then here are all of my equilibrium concentrations. Again, if you've done ice tables with weak acids, this should be very familiar. Now that my ice table is all filled out, I'm gonna write my expression for Ka. Again, just products over reactants. Plugging in my value for Ka and again, taking all of these equilibrium expressions and plugging it into Ka. I really wanna drop this minus X, let's simplify things. So looking at my Ka, I see it's 10 to the negative fifth, so that is small enough that I can drop that minus X. I'm always happy when I can drop that minus X and I don't have to use quadratic equation. <laughs> okay, so here is my new expression. I can solve for X quite easily and I get a value for X of 1.34 times 10 to the negative third. Remembering again, what is X? X is your concentration of hydronium. So I can use that to calculate my pH like so, and I get a pH of 2.872. Okay, so that's where the titration starts. Let's go on to part C. Part C wants to know what is the pH five milliliters before the equivalence point. So we already know that our equivalence point happens at 25 milliliters. So five milliliters before the equivalence point means that we have only added 20 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. So what is my chemical equation? What is going on in my flask? Well, my acetic acid is reacting with my sodium hydroxide to form water and sodium acetate. So I need to do a little stoichiometry here. We've seen this calculation before, we'll see it again. Here are how many moles of acetic acid I'm starting with, but how many moles of sodium hydroxide have I added at this point? All I need to do is use my concentration times the volume that I have added, and I have added 0 0.002 moles of sodium hydroxide. Here is where I set up my not an ice table, just my stoichiometry table. It just helps me stay organized in my mind with what's going on. 
So here's my chemical equation. Here are how many moles of each of my reactants I've started with. So which one is my limiting reactant? Well, again, this is where the beauty of the one-to-one -one stoichiometric ratio because it becomes really clear that my sodium hydroxide is my limiting reactant. So I'm gonna use up all of my sodium hydroxide. That's gonna to go to zero. I'm gonna have a little bit of my acetic acid left. And yes, I have formed some product as well. I'm gonna keep my table up just so I know what's going on, but now I need to focus in on calculating the pH here. So what is going to drive my pH at this point? Well, my strong base has gone to zero, so it's certainly not that. What's gonna drive my pH is my acetic acid, but notice what else I have. I have some sodium acetate. I have a weak acid and its conjugate base in solution. What is that? That's a buffer. It might help you to see this a little more clearly. If I write my equilibrium expression for acetic acid, so here hopefully it becomes a little more clear that here is my acid base conjugate pair and that is what forms the buffer, which means I'm gonna be using Henderson-Hasselbalch here, which also means I need concentrations. And right now my table is giving me moles, so I need to get concentration. To get concentration, I need to know what is my total volume of solution at this point. Well, I started with 25 milliliters of acid. I added 20 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. So my total volume is 45 milliliters, which yes, I am going to have to convert to liters. So taking my moles of acetic acid divided by my liters of solution, I get 0 0.0111 molarity. And I do the same thing for my acetate and I get 0 0.0444. Here is my Henderson-Hasselbalch, just making sure that I get my conjugate base in the numerator here, and there I get my weak acid. And my Ka, of course, is my Ka for acetic acid. So plugging all my numbers in here, I get a pH of 5.35. This particular problem really does highlight why I like using this kind of table, because I did need to know how much product was formed. Again, you don't have to do it like this. Do it in a way that makes sense to you. But for me, having everything in the table just helps me recognize that I've got a buffer easier than just doing the straight up stoichiometry. Now on to the equivalence point. All right, so we want the pH at the equivalence point. Here is my chemical reaction. And like we'll see at every step here, are my moles of acetic acid. At the equivalence point, I know that I have added an equal number of moles of sodium hydroxide. However, you can go through the calculation. We calculated that we needed 25 milliliters of our 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide, and that gives us the same number of moles as we have of our acid. So when I set up my table again, just to be organized, you can see I have the same number of moles of acid and base. So these are both gonna go to zero and I do form some product. Now this product is going to be key for determining our pH because unlike a titration with a strong acid and a strong base, this salt does have acid base properties because it has the acetate ion. So what's going on with acetate? Here is our balanced chemical equation. Acetate is a weak base. It's the conjugate base of acetic acid. So it will form some acetic acid and some hydroxide. This is what's gonna drive our pH. Okay, so I'm just rewriting my balanced chemical equation up here. I have a weak base in solution. I need the KB for this weak base, but I don't have it directly. However, what I do have is it's Ka for its conjugate acid, acetic acid. I can convert that and find the KB. So remember that KW equals Ka times KB for a conjugate pair. So this is only for a conjugate pair, not just for any random acid or base out there, only for a conjugate pair. But I have a conjugate pair. So my KW, of course, is always one times 10 to the negative 14th. Here is my Ka for acetic acid. I'm gonna solve for my KB for my acetate anion. And I get a KB of 5.55 times 10 to the negative 10th. Because I have a weak base in solution, I need to set up an ice table, which means though I need concentrations. 
I don't have concentrations at this point. I have moles. So I need to know what is my total volume of solution. Well, I started with my 25 milliliters of acid. At this point, I have added 25 milliliters of base. So I have a total volume of 50 milliliters or 0.05 liters. So taking my moles of acetate, remember this is how much was formed from the previous slide. Let's just pop back so you can see that. This table gives me my moles of sodium acetate that were formed, which is equal to my moles of acetate because those are in a one to one ratio. Taking those moles, dividing by my liters of solution, I get a concentration for acetate of 0.05 molarity. Now I'm ready for my ice table. Here we go. Initially, here's my concentration of acetate. Of course, I have no products. So my equilibrium is going to shift right, which means I have negative X, and then these are both positive, and then here are my equilibrium concentrations. So again, this should be very familiar, which we've just got a weak base in solution. So here is my expression for KB. Again, I have already calculated this, and I have all my equilibrium expressions right here. So plugging everything into this, I really want to get rid of this minus X, and thankfully this KB is 10 into the negative 10, so I can drop that minus x. So I'm gonna drop that term out. It's going to simplify my KB, which means x is so much easier to calculate. So here is my value for x. Again, connecting x to what's going on chemically, that is my concentration of hydroxide. Okay, so here is my concentration of hydroxide, which means I'm calculating a pOH initially. Be aware of that. This is not a pH yet, it's a pOH. So taking the negative log of my x, I get a pOH of 5.28. My very last step is converting that pOH to a pH, which thankfully is very simple because of course 14 equals pH plus pOH. So plugging in, I get a pH of 8.72. Now let's do our reality check. Does that make sense that we have a slightly basic solution at this point? Well, yes, because we have a conjugate base in solution that's driving our pH. So anytime you have a weak acid titrated by a strong base, your pH at your equivalence point will be basic. How much basic does depend on what that conjugate base is, but it will have a pH above seven. That is our pH at the equivalence point. What happens to our pH after the equivalence point? We're gonna go five milliliters after the equivalence point. So our equivalence point, of course, was at 25 milliliters of base added. So five milliliters after this means we've added 30 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. Again, putting up my balanced chemical equation here. I started with this many moles of acetic acid. How many times have we seen this calculation now? I don't know, quite a few. But how many moles of sodium hydroxide have I added at this point? I've added 0 0.003 moles. I'm gonna set up my table to keep track of my stoichiometry. Here we go. Of course, my moles of acid that I started with don't change throughout the, all of these calculations, but my moles of base do change. So in this case, which one is my limiting reagent? Well, my acid is gonna be my limiting reagent. It's definitely gonna run out first. So my acid goes to zero. My base, I have a little bit of base left over. And of course, I have formed some product. Now at this point, what is going to drive my pH? Is it going to be my conjugate base or my sodium hydroxide? Well, this all comes down to strength. Remember, my sodium acetate is a weak base in solution. My sodium hydroxide is a strong base. So my sodium hydroxide is going to drive my pH at this point. The contribution made by your acetate is so weak, it's negligible. So I have moles of sodium hydroxide, but if I want to calculate pH, I need to get to concentration. So I need my total volume of solution. So I started with still my 25 milliliters of acid. At this point, I've added 30 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. So the total volume of my solution is 55 milliliters. Here is my calculation for concentration. And I have a concentration of 0 0.00909 for sodium hydroxide, which remember is my concentration for hydroxide. Those are in a one-to-one -one ratio. So the first thing I'm going to calculate is not pH, but pOH. 
So here's how we calculate pOH. Plugging my numbers in, I get a pOH of 2.04. Converting that to pH using this equation right here, I get a pH of 11.96. Again, let's do our reality check. Does it make sense that we have a very basic solution at this point? Well, yes, it makes sense because we have extra sodium hydroxide in solution. That is a strong base. It will drive the pH up quite high. Now let's see, what does this titration curve look like? Here is our titration curve. We're titrating a weak acid with a strong base, in this case, sodium hydroxide right here. And you can see at first, we started out with a weakly acidic solution. So at first, our pH is determined just by our excess of weak acid. But then what happens in this region here? Well, remember, we had a buffer because our acetic acid, as it was titrated by the sodium hydroxide, created this conjugate base. So you can see the shape of this curve here. The pH does not change much over quite a wide range of volume of sodium hydroxide added. That's because we're in a buffer region. It resists changes in pH. This is where we used our Henderson-Hasselbach to figure out what our pH was. Now, what's going on at the equivalence point? So you can see our equivalence point is not at seven, but it's at 8.72. This is because at our equivalence point, remember we have the conjugate base of acetic acid in solution. This conjugate base is going to drive your pH. It is weakly basic, but it is still gonna bump it above seven. So the stronger a base your conjugate base is, the higher that pH will be. And then what happened after the equivalence point? Well, then our pH was determined by how much excess sodium hydroxide we have in solution. So we got very basic very quickly. I hope this example helps you on your next titration of a weak acid and a strong base. And thanks so much for watching.